where you can find rest for your soul. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. So the cathedral can provide that for people in the midst of, of, of all this busyness. Come, eat, drink, here you will find food for your soul. When we come in here, immediately we recognize we're not in a normal space, that this is sacred space. And here you can have a, an encounter with God who invites you in, that he may sup with you in that sense. It still is, even in the midst of all the noise, people can come here and find a peace that nobody else can provide for them. Well, the cathedral, of course, when it was built, was not in the center of Port of Spain. I remember if you've seen any old drawings of the cathedral, the sea was right here. But this was the main square. So after the Spanish pattern of your main square, the cathedral was at the end of it. Of course, as the city has come more and more around the cathedral, but the cathedral was always a focal point for whatever religious events they had or civic events they had. The, and the cathedral has continued, of course, to be that focus of the Archdiocese of Port of Spain. It needs to speak to the, to the secular city, here is God. Come, all you who are hungry and thirsty, come, here you will find food for your soul. Which, of course, is the other reason why it is precious in the middle of the city, because it, it should be a place that nourishes prayer. So it speaks of the presence of God, it speaks of a people of faith, it reminds people of heavenly realities. It reminds people that there's something more than just daily life without God. The cathedral is the building that was built out of Laventil bluestone from the quarries in Laventil, quarried by the people of Laventil and tooled by the people of Laventil. All of the prep work and the, and, the, and the detailing in this building, it was done by Trinidadians. Our people did it. We did it. And really, you know, if you have an old painting, because it's old, it's a, it means it's more valuable, usually, you understand? But somehow or the other, we don't translate that into the art of construction and into the art of, that's, that's contained in a building like this. But we should. We should respect the artist. We need to respect the craftsmen that actually built this, because most of them, when they did churches, most of them did it voluntarily. A lot of them did it for minimum wages because they were doing it for love of God. They were doing it for the church. In our initial dilapidation survey, we discovered that there are a lot of problems in the building. We have structural problems, we have rising dam problems, and we have general maintenance issues. The restoration has started at the area of the church that was the most dilapidated, the North Isle. The roof in this area was about to collapse. In taking down uh, bits of, uh, of, of the timbers, in examining the, uh, the, the, the trusses here, most of them were completely to my eaten. So we were looking at if there was an earthquake or something like that, we could have had another collapse like at President's house. So we're changing pretty much all of the roof on the North Isle and we're starting with the complete restoration of this area. All in all, the, the, the project has to be phased because there isn't enough money to blitz the whole thing at once. So we've separated it into five phases. The first phase is emergency works and all the works that have to deal with water penetration into the building. And also we've now added the completion of all the restoration works in the North Isle so that people can now see what the end product is going to be for the entire church. It will be like an example of what is going to happen here. It's important to preserve the best of our historic buildings for future generations. We learn a lot about past technology, about our history, etc from our built heritage. From a building like this, we can understand what the technology was at the time the building was built. 
what materials we use, the, the, the jointing, the way things are put together is completely different from the way we do it now. From this building alone, you can just learn so much about how things were done 150 years ago. As part of our collective memory, as part of our history, we need to understand where we came from. As part of not only the Catholic heritage here, but the national heritage, to simply knock down buildings because, well, you don't like them anymore, you want something new and shiny, you know, is, is doing the damage to the soul of the nation. And here is a building that speaks of God, it speaks of divine realities. This building is built for the worship of God. And so it stands as that witness, which of course is one reason why the building has to look good, you know, be well maintained, well kept and so on, because it is a witness of the God of beauty, you know, of the God of truth. There are so many memories. The cathedral is a repository of, of, of so many, so much of our collective memory over the years, that there's an emotional attachment as well. I was born in this parish, I was baptized here. When I was growing up, this whole area was more or less Catholic. You had residents right around, there were no business places per se. You had people who lived in the whole area and everybody knew the, the cathedral. Here was like home to most people. I and my cousins and my or aunt and them, and we used to come here at five o'clock in the morning. They used to have a five o'clock mass. And we used to come, if you slip out wherever, because you're not a dress up. And then sometime when we get a little bigger, we started to come seven o'clock mass. Made my first communion confirmation right here. Now, there, there are some people who feel, well, uh, we need a bigger cathedral, we need one with more parking, we need one, we need a cathedral that's, that's more central. Okay. Even if you build a new cathedral that's more central, that has more parking, that's big, new and modern and shiny and air conditioned, the emotional attachment is still here to this one. We still need to fix it. One thing, that the one, one reason why it is good to, to restore and keep the cathedral here rather than going somewhere else and building from scratch is, is almost like a ripping out of part of you, part of the Catholic psyche, if you wish. You know? Now, yes, there, there are lots of attractions about building elsewhere. But the, but the, uh, and the other thing, too, is, you know, restoration, buildings like this speak to the heart or the soul, if you wish. They speak to something in us. And this church, I always, I said, I'm not leaving this church, I go, no way. Because sometimes, you know, you feel so depressed, you feel so thing. And when I come here, it's get a, you know, feel like they I feel a lightness, everything. Just even there are these big masses, it just feels so glorious, so happy. When you go home, you feel like you're in heaven. In the, in, in the first phasing, we phased it because they wanted to use half of the building while we worked on half. The Archbishop has closed the cathedral precisely so that we can complete it which means we can work on several tasks at the same time. But to do that, we need to get the money to be able to do it. We have enough money for phase one, and that's what we're working on now, but really and truly, if we can get more money to blitz the project, it will happen faster. We thought five years initially, maybe we can get it done in three if we had all the money up front and we, had, and we could keep going. All around the building, we found that over the last years, pieces have been falling off. And this is one of the reasons why this needs to be done now. We can't wait any longer. It's about time that we had the restoration. Because I've watched the deterioration of the church from the time I was a child growing up. You see, I know nowhere else. So I, it was always my concern that the only leakage we've had, and the past administrators have been doing a little repairs and little repairs here. But um, nothing complete as what we are having now. I wanted to do it so bad that I just make a donation to the contributor. I wish I had more. I used to say if I win a lottery, I'll give my children some money. True, 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 from my heart. It needs to be updated. And it used to be so beautiful and nice. And I would like to see my cathedral come back so that I could enjoy it. Father, Lord, I'm praying for that. We have to, to, to make sure that everybody understands that this is where they can come and pray. This, is op this place is open. It's a sacred place. And we want to make it back into what it used to be. Well, yes, it's a big job. But the thing is, while there's a lot of work to do, what we're doing is re replacing like with like. We're simply looking at what was done. We analyze, we test, 
and we try to put it back to where it was originally. And so while the task may uh, seem onerous, Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, and we just need to be careful about what we're doing, take our time so that we can do it right. We want to make sure that when we are finished here, that with proper maintenance, this church will stand up again for another 100 years.